Hello, welcome to another lecture. In today's lecture will be an overview of several papers about we collect conjecture. The first one is really, uh, it should be, I was trying to find this paper of Steiner, but I wasn't able to download it, but I found a, a version, another paper that uses the same argument but uh, applies a, a better inequality, actually gets a better result. But it's basically the same argument. So, so the first part of this class will be about this paper. Um, oh, this is my net. Demonstration the absence is in French. The cycles uh, do the spin is bad. Another one, maybe this one. Um do uh certain Oh, my French is terrible, so sorry about that. Pour le problème de Syracuse. <laughs> this is from the 90s. Uh, it's a paper of Hosier. So basically it is basically this is uh, the same argument of Steiner Steiner's paper that I was unable to find but uh, with the uh, improvement on some parts okay. this is a very short paper so, um, so this is an improvement This is an improvement uh, on the result of Steiner Uh, which is a theorem on the Syracuse problem. Okay? And this is the paper I wasn't able to find. Okay, so we start with the definition. A cycle will be a sequence u0 that goes under the collapse map to u1 and so on until it gets to a certain um and then you iterate more and you get to um plus m prime and that is back to u0 and the rule is that in this case in this part here, you only apply the 3n plus 1 over 2, and in this part here, you only apply the part n over 2 of the collapse map. So, what I'm saying is, is these numbers are odd, uh, um, so what I'm saying is that u not of 2 u m minus 1 is odd, and the rest. is even. And then once you apply one more time, uh, you get to this odd number u naught. Okay, so that's the definition of a cycle. But that's a one cycle. You could uh, so this is uh, something that a uh, picture could be something like this. You go up and then you go down and go back to u naught. 
that's called like a one cycle, um, and you, you can also study two cycles and three cycles, etc. And there's actually generalization on this saying that uh, uh, for two cycles, okay. So the theorem we want to prove today, which is in my notes, is theorem 37, is the following. Um, the only cycle of the collapse map is 1, 2, 1. Okay. And as I said, there is a, uh, another paper which is fairly recent that uh, proves using the same techniques that there is no two cycle that is something that goes up, goes down, goes up, and goes down. Um, uh, and you can also use you will see that you can also use uh, these techniques plus some other results to say that any let's say k cycle something goes up, down, and has, and has uh, k uh, peaks. Let's say. Uh, uh, things like this, there are only finitely many things like this for the collapse map. We can even give a, a bound depending on the number of peaks, uh, on the number of possible cycles with k peaks. Um, but that I will leave uh, for you guys to search and, and, and find the correct uh, papers to read. Okay? So the proof is actually. Uh, straightforward. Once you know the, uh, once you know what result you want to apply. Okay. Um, so let's let's first see what is happening here. So I'm applying to U not this map several times. So so U M for instance is supposed to be three half. U M minus one plus one half. Because U M comes from one minus one just by applying this map and so on uh, if you apply one more time then this must come from m minus two and you have a three halves here a half plus a half so you can conclude that uh, if you iterate this and you solve this recursion you will see that we did this already um, in more than one class, I guess. You get this. So this is the UM after you iterate because you know that you're only applying 3M plus 1 uh, over 2. Um, but then also you know that if you divide UM by, by 2 to the M prime, you get U0. So that means that 2 to the M prime U0 equals UM, which is this guy. Okay, so I want to rearrange this, this equation in, in two different ways. The first way is this. So basically to do this, I'm just multiplying uh, everything by 2 to the m plus m prime. Um, so I can cancel. So, no, I'm just multiplying by... 2 to the m, sorry. So I get 2 to the m plus m prime here, multiplying your not, so this is coming from this, and then you have 2 to the m from this one here, when you move to that side, and then then you remain this bit here, uh, um, plus this, this guy here, when you put together, you get this, okay? So that's one way of rearranging this inequality. And the other way is just solving for you not. Um, so if you solve uh, for you not, what do you get? Um, yes. If you solve for you not, what you get is um, 3 to the m minus 2 to the m divided by 2 to the uh, m plus m prime minus 3 to the m, okay? 
that's what what happens if you solve for your knot. Okay. So that uh, so from this first one, let me let let us deduce some inequality. So the first thing you can do is to uh, basically say that. Um, um, Yes, yeah, so, uh, so first you can just throw away this one here, and what you get is something like that. This is greater than um, 2 to the m plus m prime, you know. And then from there you can deduce some things. Um, or, or also you can transform this one into a 2 to the m prime, so maybe it's greater than this, and less than... Um, to the m plus m prime u naught plus 1. And one thing we have to observe here is that if you have a cycle which is not 1, 2, 1, then you know that uh, um, yes, once you have a cycle that is not two, 1, 2, 1, then you know that uh, in here, you have something like this, then you know that m has to be greater or equal than 2 because if you're just applying once here and then you are reducing by 2 then if you reduce one more time then you will get past the initial uh, u naught uh, therefore you can only do once so if m was um, 1 but then prime would be 1, and then you can show that actually you are in the cycle 1, 2, 1. Okay, so m has to be greater than equal to 2, and also u naught has, cannot be 1, of course, so it has to be greater than equal to 2. Okay. Okay. So these are strict inequalities because m prime, um, uh, first of all, I'm dropping this one, so this is strict, and I'm replacing this by m prime, and m prime cannot be zero, of course. M prime is also greater than one. So these are the strict inequalities. So from this, you conclude, let's say, from this, you conclude what? You first, you can cancel this with that, so you conclude that 2 to the m plus m prime is greater than 3 to the m. So, okay, so it's legitimate to divide this thing by... So this can be dividing here, so it's nice. And second, you also deduce that from this inequality here, and then from for, for this inequality here, I'm taking logs. So if you take the log, uh, uh, what you get is the following. You will get that uh, uh, m plus m prime, and you rearrange the terms, minus log 3 over log Two, this is the natural log, is less than one over m log two, and then log of uh, u naught plus one over u naught. Okay. So basically, I'm just using this inequality here with this guy and this guy here, and this uh, this is greater than this, so the log of this is greater than the log of this, and then I rearrange the terms and I get this this inequality. And moreover, because of this one, if I take log on this one as well, you get that m plus m prime divided by m is greater than log 3 over log 2. So this is actually greater than 0. Okay. Okay. And then you realize something. You realize that if you then if you multiply both sides here by m, okay, then you get here something is log of u naught plus 1 over u naught divided by log 2. And since u naught is greater or equal than 2, you re realize that this number here is less uh, than 1. And therefore, if you multiply everything by m, you conclude that you have an integer m plus m prime, which is close to m times log of 3 over divided by log of 2. Uh, it's closer than 1 uh, uh, to this number. So therefore, you conclude that m plus m prime is actually the um, ceiling, because it's greater, ceiling of m times log of 3 divided by log of 2. Okay. 
that's uh, another thing. Okay. And then now what we want to use, so And that's why we are doing these inequalities, because we want to use the result of uh, Waldschmidt. Which is show that a rational approximations to log of 3 divided by log 2 cannot be absurdly good. So he puts a limitation on that, and this holds for every p over q1, p greater equal than 2, and p over q, over q is a reduced fraction. Okay. Okay, so, so that's the result. That is a result we want to prove, uh, want to use anyway. Um, And uh, so that's why we are doing all these inequalities. So when you get to this point, you conclude something. You conclude... When you get to this point, you conclude, well, this is exactly a fraction uh, that is reduced. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, sorry, it, it, in here, you don't even have this... This is not, uh, sorry. Anything you have like this uh, works. Uh, it doesn't need to be reduced, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, which is exactly uh, the thing we have here. Um, so we have a fraction here which is close to log of 3. So we can say that this ratio here, so by Walsh uh, Schmidt result, we can say that. Um, the right hand side, which is uh, is greater than m to the 15, so we have m log of 2, and then log of this number here, log. Let me put in this form. Okay? But then log of 1 plus something is less or equal than the something, so I can then reduce this to just put in. Uh, uh, this is less than 1 over m log 2 times u naught. Okay? And, and another thing you can deduce here is that how great, how big u naught has to be. Well, you know that from this thing, you know that 2 to the m divides this number. It cannot divide anything in here because it's the 3 to the m. So it has to divide so 2 to the m divides this. So that implies that u naught is greater or equal than 2 to the m minus 1. Okay, so I can then replace u naught here uh, by uh, 2 to the m minus 1. And then what you deduce, you deduce an equation, which is, so from this, you get what? You get that um, uh, log 2 times 2 to the m minus 1 um, has to be less than m to 4 p. Okay, that's what you deduce. And there are only finitely many m's that can hold this inequality. And then you conclude from this that, I think it's 19, I guess, let me see. Yeah, that's the largest uh, integer that satisfies this equation. And then you can just go ahead and test if, because you know this thing here, you know, so let me rewrite this. So one way to rewrite this is to move the m to this side. Uh, 
No, sorry. No, it's not, not, not the fact that it wants to do it. So I'm going to just replace this guy in here. So what I can do is just, since I know that this is true, I can just replace this by 2 through uh, m log 3 over log 2. Okay. So now you can just plug in m in this equation and see if we get an integer. Because u0 has to be an integer. And m has to be less than or equal to 91. So it just puts all the m's from 2 to 91 in this fraction here and has if this is an integer, and you, you will see that it's not, it's never an integer, and then, uh, so that finishes the proof. Okay. And that's more or less the same idea if you want to generalize to two cycles, so that is, but probably you have to do a lot more work um, uh, with this, this inequality and etc. But that's the basic idea. Okay. So let's move now to the other uh, topic I want to present. Okay, and this is uh, uh, the theoretic results related with the collapse conjecture. Okay, so now we will talk about three, uh, like a compendium of results. Uh, uh, contain th three different papers. So the first one is uh, the 3x plus 1 problem and its uh, generalizations. This is uh, 85 Ligarius. And this is the paper to go whenever you want to uh, recall something. This is, is the reference to go. Uh, also his book. I mean, his book, but his book is basically, it's too many stuff, basically. Uh, his book is just a compendium of papers published uh, about the problem. But this is the paper to go. Um, um, you know, Iterative um, toadic statement of the three n plus one conjecture. And this is from ninety four, and it's a paper of Bernstein. And then Laguerre and Bernstein team up and then did something uh, about it, which was the, the 3x plus 1 conjugacy map. This is in 96. Okay. So basically, pick, select a bunch of results from these three papers. Okay, so before we start, the results are actually pretty simple to understand, and once you uh, uh, understand what you want to do, uh, but you, you need some background. Let me just recall what are the p-adic uh, numbers. So what are the p-adic numbers? So you have q, the rationales, and you're going to complete. So, uh, with a certain, so you're going to put a certain metric here uh, that's going to make every uh, um, um, so you only have a notion of convergence, and but not every Cauchy sequence would have a limit. So you then complete that with this. Uh, 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 with this new set of numbers. Uh, there are others, several, uh, several ways of getting it to the p-adic numbers, the analytic ways, and etc. Uh, but I will use this one for now. So is this completion of Q with the metric uh, 
So the distance between two numbers would be y p, and this p valuation p minus a if you can write that as as a, a power of p r to the s and r and s are co prime. So they are not divisible by p. Uh, sorry, integers. Okay, so you, you take a fraction, you take the, the everything that is related with p, put in a power, and then you take minus that power. Okay. Um, so you can show that this is a proper norm. So one one can show. Uh, that uh, uh, x minus y p is less or equal than the max between um, So you can show that this is less equal than this, so therefore it satisfies the triangle inequality. Uh, so this is a kind of a norm, and it, it could in some way think of this like a, a, a kind of Banach space, I guess, in a way. Um, so then you can show, so one can show this, uh, also uh, one can show that uh, whenever you get an x, then you can write this as a kind of a power series. Start from some integer n. And these guys are just uh, numbers from 0 to uh, p minus 1. Or you can also imagine them as, uh, you can also imagine them as belonging to, to the residue class 1 p. Okay, and this n here is just some integer, which can be negative, okay? okay. Um, what else? Um, yes. And then you have, so this would be the piadic numbers, then you have the piadic in integers, which will, we denote by this, which will be exactly those um, piadic numbers so that their expansion uh, start only with k greater than equal than zero. Okay, so these would be the piadic uh, integers. So these are piadic. integers. Okay, you can also. You can, uh, uh, in the piano integers, you can put a notion of, you can put a notion of balls. Uh, um, so, for instance, you can say that a ball centered at x would be all those y's such that uh, y is congruent to x uh, mod p to the k. Oh, I have to define what's mod p to the k. Uh, but let me just uh, finish. So mod p to the k here, uh, p k. Uh, uh, so we will say that two numbers. So we will say x is congruent to y mod p k if um, x minus y is divisible by p to the k. So it starts with some, let's see, L greater than equal than K, AL, P to the L. Okay. That means that the first K digits 
of x and y are uh, equal. So that means that they go on to p to the k. Okay, so this would be a notion of a ball centered at x, and you can also put a measure, you can also put a measure, let's say measure p, in the ball, and just say that this is just 2, uh, not 2, p, uh, I have to, to be careful here, because I want the probability measure. If you do this, then uh, m p is a is is actually the hard probability measure in this space. Because Z P is compact. Okay. Z P is a compact matrix uh, 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 metric space with this metric and mu P will be its hard measure because it will be invariant under translation. Huh? Um, okay. What else? So an example, so for instance, so one way to represent a number, for instance, you can write it as an integer, a, a, a piano integer, you just write it like we write uh, uh, normal, like standard integers, but just you can continue the integer forever to the left. So for instance, uh, you can put like uh, ak, ak minus 1, up to a1, a0, and you put a p. So this is a possible notation for periodic integers. You can also reverse the notation, there are books that reverse it, but anyway. Um, so you can write it like this. So for instance, if you go to mod 2, that would be the case I'll be working on, you can realize that 3 is 0, 1, 1 in, in periodic integers, and then minus 1 third is uh, 0, 1. Um, so these are periodic integers. So the idea is, well, Q itself is inside the set QP when you complete. And then when you take the Q, uh, the, the periodic integers, maybe some of these fractions is, are also periodic integers for certain keys. And what I'm saying is in one third is. Uh, uh, and also you can actually prove that every fraction is for every p, every fraction is contained in here, so you can, you can, you can show that uh, your rationals are, so, so you can represent any rational in there, okay? Um, um, uh, maybe, the, maybe, maybe not exactly, maybe you need the rational to be, more or less, I mean, Okay, not exactly this. Uh, um, actually, I don't know. Um, um, can I represent every rational? Uh, um, sure, 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 sure. This is supposed to be right. Yeah, what I'm talking about. Just a moment, I got confused. Yeah, so one third can be represented uh, like this, and minus one third can be represented like this. Uh, and so on. And one way for the instance, how can you compute such a stuff? So I'm just going to give you a short example. So basically, what you have to do is to uh, uh, iterate the procedure of putting powers of 2 here. So you, you reduce something, and uh, so you remove the first, uh, what, what would be the first digit? That's the operation you have to do. You put the first digit here, 2 times something. And then you repeat, repeat the process with the something you left. And then this guy is uh, 1 minus 2 times 2 thirds. And then you have, uh, then you have 2 thirds minus 2 thirds. And then minus 2 thirds is 0 minus 2 times 1 third. 
And then now the process repeats because it will have a minus one third. So we got one, one, zero, and then you get one, zero, one, zero. So that's exactly the expansion. This is, this uh, under line here just means that I repeat this pattern forever. Um, and so you can see also the minus one third is just one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay, okay so this is, was the um, review of piadic integers. Uh, and from now on, we'll just we'll be working with two adic integers. Um, so you can, uh, so you have the collapse map, and you can easily extend this to uh, uh, um, to two adic integers, and it's kind of in the same way. If it's even, then you divide by two. If it's odd, you multiply by three, add one, and divide by two. Um, so one way of writing this is if you have a, 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 a number which is just 2 to the d naught and then 2 to the d1 plus etc. But this would be any kind of a, a, a two added integer. d naught could be either 0 greater or equal to 0. But uh, so if you have x, you can always write x like this where zero is greater than the naught, less than one, and so on. So if the naught is zero, uh, um, if the naught is zero, that means this is a one, that means that the number is odd, because the rest is divided by two, but not this one, so the number is odd. So that would be exactly, so if the naught is zero, then you, then you just uh, multiply by three, add one and divide by two, so you would get a two, when you multiply by 3, um, you get here a 3 times, and then 2z1 minus 1, plus 3 times 2z2 two, 2 minus 1, so it's plus plus plus. You multiply by 3, uh, then you add 1, and divide everything by 2, yes. So this is if d naught is 0. If d naught is greater than zero, then you just do this. Okay, and then you see that if this stops, okay, if so, that means is any positive integer, uh, and also of course, I mean, from this we can't either x is zero or it has this expansion. If it's zero, then you just map to zero. Okay. Um, so then you extend c to all the two added integers, and once you restrict this c to the integers, then it maps integers to integers exactly in the way that the coax map uh, does. Okay, so this is like a proper extension uh, of the coax map. Okay, so you can easily extend it. Let me erase this board now. So one thing you can show is that once you do that, and you have a measure, then you kind of are in the world of uh, ergodic theory, and you can ask if C preserves the natural measure, and the answer is yes, it preserves, and so C will preserve uh, uh, the, the natural measure of the space, which would be M2, and also uh, it will be strongly mixing which will imply that, uh, I'm, I'm not going to show this, I'm just going to mention, okay, so you can show that, and this is a paper actually, C is a uh, measure preserving, strongly mixing, And so, in any map that's strongly mixing measure preserving is ergodic. Uh, 
That means that the only invariant sets, recording means that the only invariant sets is either the empty set or the whole set. There isn't any trivial, non trivial invariant set for C. Uh, measure preserving just means that the measure of the inverse of uh, the measure, measure preserving just means that uh, the two of C1. This is measure preserving. Ergodic means what I just told, no, no known trivial invariant set. Uh, and strongly mixing uh, means this. Strongly mixing means that uh, uh, if you iterate, maybe it's with inverse here, I don't know, then that thing converges as n goes to infinity. To the product. Okay. Uh, that's strong, yeah, that that's strongly mixing. Mixing is if if this holds in average, uh, strongly mixing is that uh, thing, and th this implies, for instance, that it's ergodic. Um, but th th these are stuff in ergodic theory, and we will explore connections with ergodic theory. In the next lecture, not in this one, but not exactly this this kind of thing. Well, this kind of result is nice, but it doesn't uh, uh, apply. It can be used to show anything because the Gordic theory is all about uh, uh, things that happen, uh, phenomena that happens in for sets that are measurable or uh, that have positive measure. Anything that has zero measure. Uh, will be blind, so the, 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 the dynamics will be blind to that set. And the integers have, is a set of measure zero inside uh, the p-adic two-adic integers. So therefore, I mean, these results are nice, but they can't really be used to attack the, the, the collapse conjecture in, in any case. But these are nice results. Um, so let me make another definition. I'm define this math. Phi, which will be minus 3 to the L, 3 to the minus L, <coughs> DL, uh, if um, X is 2 to the D0 plus 2 to the D1 plus etc. And we have this, okay? So this will be uh, a definition of this map. Uh, also, of course, if X is 0, then I just defined phi of 0 to be 0, that's also uh, And the second um, definition will be this, the shift map. So this is the shift map, the two addix shift. Uh, so what's, what is a shift map? It's, it's the left shift in this case. Well, we, for every number we have a 2 x expansion, so you can just shift the, the digits to the 2 x expansion uh, to the left, uh, or if you're thinking this representation should be to the right. Um, so this will be uh, just x minus 1 over 2, if x is odd, or x over 2 if x is even. Okay? So if x is even, there isn't the zero term, then you can divide by 2, and that would be exactly just shifting everything to, uh, to the left. To the, to the left, yeah, exactly. If you think, uh, but it's reverse, but if you think in this way, then it's shifting to the right. Okay, so this is a two-attic shift, and the theorem is that um, C composed with phi is phi composed with S, and that phi from Z2 to Z2 is a homeomorphism. Okay, so in dynamic terms, I'm saying that uh, C is conjugated to S. 
in dynamic terms, the dynamic of C is exactly the same as the dynamics of S because they are conjugated dynamical systems. Um, um, okay. So, so let's let's prove this. It's actually uh, not hard. Um, Okay, so let's prove first that uh, uh, phi is continuous. Um, so first of all, um, well, phi is continuous can be proven by by its form, its shape, because uh, I mean, to prove that this is continuous, you have to show that um, if x is close to another guy, then phi of x is close to the phi of this other guy. Um, but it turns, but you can, if you use, so, so problem, let's see, uh, show phi is continuous. Okay. And then basically, I just have to use the, the inequality I told you. Uh, um, oh, the, there is another one, which is uh, yes. You can show that this is true, um, and then if you use that, you can easily show that this is continuous. Um, okay. So okay, so we have a continuous map. So now let me define another continuous map, psi. So psi of x would be. Okay, that would be the map. So you just take the collapse map, iterate, take its mod two, and uh, um, and uh, write this this integer here. Okay. One thing you can show is that whatever you put here, whatever sequence of zeros and ones, whenever you write this thing, this thing is, is a the, the 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 partial sums form a Cauchy sequence. In, uh, uh, in Q2 or even Z2, if you wish, uh, and therefore they converge. Okay, so you can write anything like this, it's a well defined function. Okay. So let me show that this guy is uh, continuous and it's one to one and it is also a bijection. Okay, and then later we'll show that this guy is actually the inverse of phi, and if that is the case, uh, inverse from the left and from the right. If that is the case, then phi is uh, um, um, uh, one to one, for instance, and is also a bijection. So, so therefore, phi will be a homeomorphism. Okay. So, uh, so first we have to recall that we use this function e k of x before, which is just if we just take the vector y equals 0 to k minus 1. We showed this that we showed in the lecture of uh, uh, in uh, in show in the lecture of Teha's paper that uh, ek is 2 to the k periodic and if you uh, if you go to if you 
take a complete set of residue classes mod 2k and you evaluate e, k, and this set, then you just have, uh, then you just enumerate all the sequence of zeros and ones, which means that, um, and so e, k is a permutation. That's what we showed. Okay. So in particular, you see. So let me define now uh, phi k minus one. Oh, shouldn't do psi k of x should be uh, um, e k of x times the vector dot product with this vector one two up to 2k minus 1, and you realize that this guy is congruent to psi mod 2 to the k, as I told you, because this is exactly the first k digits of the map that I just defined. Okay? So if you have two vectors, x minus y, whose the norm is less or equal than 2 to the k, well, that's the equivalent of saying that x is congruent to y mod 2k. This one's not good. This one's good. That's equivalent to saying that. Great. Uh, again, you can show that this kind of stuff. I'm not going to bother with the details here. Uh, and then... Well, if that is true, that is if and only if, and that's what we showed, since it's a periodic mod 2k and a permutation, it's if and only if e k of x equals e k of y. Okay. But then that implies by this that psi x uh, is congruent because uh, then psi k of x will be equal to psi k of y, of course. Let me write that like this. So this implies that psi of x is congruent to psi of y mod 2k, which is the same as saying that uh, 2 to the minus k, and therefore uh, if x is close to y, then p of x is close to psi of y. So that shows that psi is continuous. Um, so let me show that. Uh, um, so e k is a permutation, and psi k is congruent to psi mod 2k. So if y in z2 is given, then we definitely can find an x k such that psi of xk is congruent to y mod 2k. Because, well, I just take the first uh, k digits of y, okay, well, and then I take the function ek, I know that ek is a permutation, there will be an x that will have exactly those zeros and ones, exactly that's y, the first k, but then this thing is congruent to psi, so I can find this guy, okay? And since we are in a compact space, xk will then accumulate at some vector x uh, star, let's say, when k goes to infinity. And therefore, since this is continuous, phi of x equals psi of x equals y. So it's a bijection. Um, and also you can see that uh, it's also one to one. Because if x is not y, then there exists some k such that x is not congruent to y mod 2k. But that's exactly as saying that x minus y uh, 2 is greater than 2 to the minus k. Um, but then by the same... Um, uh, well, sorry, is not congruent, so that means that e k of x is not equal to a k of y, so that means that these two functions are not equal, that means that these are not congruent 
to uh, uh, to uh, um, so by the same reasoning as before, this will imply that phi of x is not congruent to phi of y mod 2k. Uh, which then would imply that exactly that psi of x is not psi of y. Okay, so that implies that psi is one to one continuous and by uh, so so rejection. So therefore, a bijection. So therefore, uh, it has a continuous inverse. Um, and then we just have to show that its inverse uh, coincides with psi. So let me show that its inverse coincides with psi. So let x, for instance, be something like this. Uh, sorry, its inverse coincides with phi. Psi is inverse. So the claim now, so claim is that psi equals phi inverse. Okay, um, so uh, so then y of which would be phi of x would just be minus one third two to the minus d naught. Yes, and then minus one nine two to the let me write that three squared three squared d1 minus 1 over 3 cubed, 2 to the d2, and so on. Okay. So what we know, we know that suppose, um, yeah, so what we know is that, uh, we know that y divided by 2 to the, let's see, 2 to the i, with i equals 0 up to d naught minus 1, Okay, so, uh, and this interval could be empty if d naught is zero, for instance. Uh, d naught is not minus one. Yeah, d naught minus one. Uh, this, uh, um, yes, this is even. Because, well, yeah, whenever I put any of these numbers, I still have a 2 here remaining, so I can isolate this 2, so I have 2 times something, so that number is even. Okay, so that means that if I apply C to this guy, it would definitely apply the division by 2 to the i this number of times, so we conclude that C uh, d naught of y is going to be just 1 minus, minus 1 third, and then minus one third squared two to the d one minus d naught minus one third cubed two to the d two minus d naught and so on. Okay, so now we reach a uh, odd number because we saw that minus one three minus one third starts with a one. Okay, and all these other guys have twos, so this would be an odd number. So we have to apply the multiplication by 3, so you multiply by 3 at 1, so you cancel this guy, and you reduce every single power here, and then you divide by 2, so when you do, uh, uh, is that, yes, yeah, so d naught plus 1 will be um, minus 1 third, 2 to the d, 1 minus d naught minus 1, minus 1, 3 squared, d2 minus d0 minus 1, and so on. And now I can repeat the process that I started before. So we we'll then conclude that um, so we will then conclude if so so what I'm saying is that well up to d naught, all the numbers of were even. So once I do this, I will get a bunch of zeros until I get to c d naught, and that guy will be odd. Okay, so I put then a one here. Okay, and then uh, um, and then so on. 
So I will get exactly one here whenever i is d0 or d1, etc. And so, but that is exactly x. You see. So by this, by this, by induction here. So induction. Uh, you conclude that the set of i is greater than equal to zero, such so, so that c i y is odd. That means I will put the one here in this function. Uh, is exactly d naught, d one, and etc. So that implies that psi of y is just x because it will be exactly the expression of x. I will put the one exactly where I supposed to put to create x. Okay, so that shows that uh, psi composed with phi equals the identity, and I will leave the opposite one, which is phi composed with psi equals identity as an exercise, okay? So we'll finish here. So the problem, I still have to show that the opposite is true, that phi composed with psi is the identity, and that's your, your an exercise for you guys. Okay, let me erase this. So this is very nice to know. I mean, we know now that C is a dynamical system with certain properties and more or less conjugated to the shift. And it's always nice because the shift is one of the most studied objects in the Gordic theory. And pretty much everything is a shift anyway. Um, um, so that's what we showed. So then you can ask, well, okay, but, uh, ergodic properties uh, or measure theoretical properties of C is not going to tell much about if the collapse conjecture is true or not, or if parts of it is true or not. And you would be right. Uh, uh, but you could then, well, then you could write other statements that actually will tell you something else. Um, so, but just to complete this, uh, this, uh, so the, the previous result was here on 38, maybe I forgot to write it. So, and this is theorem 39, and the thing is that phi minus 1 is measure of preserving. Uh, and, and in particular, so is its inverse. Uh, uh, yeah, but it, that's kind of easy to show because uh, the proof is really simple because well, we know that, uh, we now know that, uh, that, uh, that C composed with V equals V composed with S. So therefore, uh, um, yes, therefore, Well, well, C is measure preserving, S is measure preserving, so you can kind of uh, guess that so V should be. It's not always the case, by the way. But most of the time they are. Um, and one thing you can do is just to measure Okay, so we have to get the same measure. So the question is, is that equal to 2 to the k? And the answer is yes, because phi minus 1 of ball equals uh, uh, 
Because these are the guys that, are, that have the, the first k did is equal to alpha. But if I apply phi, uh, if you have the first k did is equal to alpha, uh, then the collapse map depending only on these digits, really, uh, then it will apply uh, mod 2, sorry, depending on these digits. Then when I, once I apply it, we have the first same digits, which is exactly to say that it's in the bulb with these guys. And so this, this is just using that phi minus 1 of x is equal to c i x mod 2 to the i. And these guys here depend only on x mod 2 to the k. So if I have something, uh, if i is less than equal than k minus 1. So if you have two guys that have the same first k digits, then uh, a p will also have the first same k digits. Okay? So that's kind of a trivial. Shouldn't any. I shouldn't have named this a theorem. But anyway, uh, so now I have two nice things. So the first one is so the two last results. Collect uh, conjecture is true, is equivalent to the statement that uh, the positive integers contained in phi of one third of the integers and theorem 41 is that uh, if phi of the rationals intersection uh, z2 equals rationals in z2 um, so we're getting only the rational numbers which are in, in there. Um, uh, then um, uh, C has, it could just put rationals, but uh, I'm going to emphasize that in Z2. Uh, so, uh, because it's, it's the, the, yeah, I want to use that. Uh, and it has no divergent. Trajectories, and one can also show that this is always true. This is true. Okay. Well, this is true just because of the way phi is defined. I'm just dividing by minus one third, etc. So if you start with the rational number, then at some point uh, the digits would start to get in periodicity, so you start to get in the loop. Uh, then as, if I start dividing by one third, you can actually summate that the thing and conclude that the, the tail will be irrational, and then four will be irrational. Okay, so this is always true. Uh, the, 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 the problem is the, the, the inverse. If the inverse is true, then there are no divergence trajectories in C. I mean, C is restricted to the integers. Okay, so the, 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 the standard C that we have. Okay, so let's prove. Proofs is actually. Simple. Okay. Um, um, so okay. So if n is a positive integer, and c k of n equals one, then I want to show that actually uh, that particular n is an n in the image of one third of the integers. Okay. So, so then I apply, so I want to show that psi minus 1, phi minus 1 of n, so it will be here, is actually, that's the question, one third of an integer, is that true? Okay, well, um,
Well, it is because if you do this, uh, so this would be ci n mod 2, 2 to the i, greater equal to 0. But then what, what you know is that at some point it gets to 1. Let's say k is the first one. And then it's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 forever. So when it gets to k minus 1, the next one will be uh, um, 1, 2, 1, 2. So we have here 2 to the k, and then 2 to the k plus 2, then 2 to the k plus 4. Because here, to put uh, uh, the, the, the parity of the number, so k was 1, so it's odd. The next one will be 2, which will be the guy we have to multiply to, to the 2 to the k plus 1. The guy is even, because it will be 2. And the next one will be odd, so etc. And this guy here is uh, 2 to the k times minus 1 third. Okay. Because we saw that this, the expansion of minus 1 third is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. So, so now you have an integer, and you have an integer divided by 1 third, so this is an integer divided by 3. And it could be negative because you have this minus here, so you don't know. You can't put z plus here, so you have to be z over 3. Okay, so that part is easy. Then we go to the other. If phi minus 1 of n belongs to 1 third of z, then I have to show that eventually ck of n, and n is an integer, of course, n is a positive integer, then I have to show that ck of n eventually gets to 1. Um, um, so, in particular, we get that n belongs to phi minus 1, that's a phi of 1 third of z. What do we do now? Um, The first claim is that phi minus 1 is not an integer, okay? Well, because, well, if, if this was 0, for instance, uh, then n would be 0, okay? But n is a positive integer, which is not the case, okay? So n is not 0. What else? Um, If this was an integer, then phi minus 1 of n mod 2, um, sorry, by definition, okay, of this guy, which is this, so by definition, uh, um, if this was an integer, then uh, eventually this will have to be zero. For some k. Well, it's an integer. That has to happen. Um, okay. Um, if it's a positive integer, for instance, that has to happen. But then that will imply that I start to divide by 2 up to infinity and not stopping, which is impossible because, uh, yeah, that, that never happens for the, 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 the collapse map. Okay, so this is impossible, absurd. Okay. Um, If it's a negative integer, uh, then um, it doesn't mean it could be the case that uh, this is uh, gets into uh, 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 a certain loop, etc. But it will let this as a problem. So, so this is uh, okay. So if uh, minus one of n is greater or equal to zero, then this can happen. Uh, if P minus one of n is less than zero, probably. Um, this actually just has one or two lines. Um, 
So then you conclude that uh, because it belongs to one third set, so it can only belong to these two sets, okay? Okay, so, uh, and then the expansion of two thirds also gets in the period one. Uh, 1, 0, 1, 0 at some point. Um, so you conclude, you can even put minus here if you wish. So that gets, so that's 1, 0, 1, 0, and that's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, uh, so you conclude that uh, eventually uh, there exists some L such that CL plus I of N mod 2. I greater than equal to zero is just one zero one zero one zero, etc. But if that is the case, then um, uh, we just showed in the previous paper that the only cycle is the cycle one two. So that means that it eventually got into a cycle one two one two one two. Uh, it, because, well, it's even odd, even odd, even odd. Uh, um, so, um, so that can only happen if you got into a cycle. Hey, there's some more to here to do. This can only happen, I mean, that, that means that you got to an odd, and so then you apply the odd 3n plus 1 over 2, then you divide it by 2, and you apply it and you divide it by 2, and you keep doing this forever without stopping. That means that you definitely got into a cycle. So you got to starting with a number, got to an odd number and came back to the same number. Okay, so you have to show this. So you got to into a two cycle, uh, into a cycle, but you just show that the only cycle possible is one, two. So therefore, uh, uh, there exists some L prime such as that CL prime of N equals one. Okay, so using the previous paper. Okay, so now let's prove theorem 41. Um, So, um, so let's prove this thing here. And this is actually easy to show. So assume, so suppose that we have some n which the trajectory is the divergent. Okay. So C i n is divergent. That means it never gets into a cycle. Okay. That's what it means. Okay, so then you can show that C i n mod two uh, cannot be eventually periodic. Because if it is eventually periodic means that if it's eventually periodic, you can show then that the solution has to be uh, the, the, the iteration here has to be trapped in some region, 
and therefore it cannot go to infinity, and therefore it actually gets uh, uh, into a loop. Okay. Okay, so there is some work here to do, probably. It's not hard. Uh, so therefore, psi minus 1 of n belongs to, uh, uh, doesn't belong, is not a rational, because if it was a rational, then this would be eventually periodic. Okay. So basically, it's the realization that uh, whenever you have something which mod 1 is eventually periodic, uh, it means that you actually got in the real loop of CI then. Okay, so that's something I have to show, probably. Um, that, that, so, so this comes from this realization. So therefore, this cannot be a rational number, because if it was a rational number, then um, you would never, uh, you would, this would be eventually periodic, because rational number have repeating uh, 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 digits. At some point, the digit starts to repeat, to get to an, a pattern. So, so for the, that's why you have this. So then, this implies that psi implies that n uh, does not belong to phi of z to intersection q. But we are assuming that. Um, and theorem 41, that we have this, in particular this is containing this, so this contains, or it's equal to this, so therefore n is not rational, which means it's not in an integer, but it's impossible because we're assuming that n is an integer, so a contradiction. Okay. So we get the results. It's actually just a bunch of simple realizations. You have to, these are the kind of theorems that you just have to think, and then you, oh yeah, that's why it's true. Uh, but uh, it takes some time to get used to the language, uh, at least for me. Um, but uh, that's it for today, and thank you.